one day there is a goat. The goat is munching and crunching upon some nice green grass. The goat lifts its head only to see approaching there is a lion. And the lion is coming approaching the goat and the goat is shit. I'm going to become the meal for that beast. And as the lion comes close to the goat, the goat steps back and says, I'm an emissary of death. I have come from heaven. I've come to vanquish a lion. I've come to vanquish a jackal. I've come to vanquish a hyena. But you, you are old and you can go. And the lion, hearing this from the mouth of the goat, steps back and walks away. And the lion, he goes to his lair and he sits down in his cave. And he's all quiet and troubled. And into the lair comes a jackal. <laughs> Sire, says the jackal to the lion. Sire, why do you look so forlorn? Your face all droopy droopy. What's wrong? Lion, says to the jackal. You would be scared if you had been visited by a messenger. A messenger from heaven, one of God's own, from above or below. Sire, says the jackal, and what be this messenger? A messenger of death, it be a messenger of death. And he says he's come to a lion. I am a lion. He says he's come to vanquish a hyena. And he's come to find this jackal. You're a jackal. That's why I hide in this cave. And the jackal says, <laughs> Sire, shall we not go in search of this, of this emissary of death and see truly what it looks like? Maybe we can taste its flesh. And the lion says, yeah, maybe. You lead the way and they trot out from the lion's lair and they go out upon the land and they are walking and the goat, not knowing what's going on, munching and crunching upon some green grass, lifts his eyes again only to see the lion is coming with the jackal. And the goat thinks, oh shit, there we go. I'm going to become the food for two mouths now. And the goat thinks quickly and says, Jackal, why did you bring me this one? This is not the one I'm looking for. He's too old. Now go and find me another one. And the lion looks at the jackal and says, Jackal, you are working for the emissary of death. And the jackal says, no, no, not me. And the lion picks up the jackal. The lion rips open his stomach. And the lion ah, eats all of his innards. And the jackal, very wisely, steps back and walks away. Draw 
bowing towards her. And the lion, he goes by some buffaloes. Buffaloes! I am the king! Buffaloes, do you know who I am? I'm the king of the buffaloes. Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're the king. Your ass is the lion. They all know I'm the king. He goes back to the elephant. Elephant! I'm the king! Do you know I am the king of the elephant? Still drawing water. Still munching and crunching. And the lion, he goes over to some other animals there. I am the king! I am the king! Do you know who I am? And the other animals, they're dead. They go running. They go, oh, shit, man, yeah. You're the king, yeah, yeah, you're the king. And the lion comes back to the elephant. Elephant! I am the king! And the elephant picks up the lion in the truck, throws the lion to the tree. Bam! Lion struck up all of his back. Elephant comes over to the lion, tramples on the lion, mashes him into the ground, rubs him down to his feet, picks him up again, throws him against another tree. He hits the tree, bam, on his back. The lion falls to the ground, and the lion looks at the elephant and says, Stop, okay, 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 okay. If you don't know the answer, you should just say it. <laughs> Chicken, roast potato, maybe a nut roast. 
gets up, he remembers the wonderful men he has. Oh, and the sky is still blue, the grass is green, the hills are rolling, the birds are singing, and the water is flowing. And standing next to him is a very distinguished man, and the man says to him, I can give you anything you want, anything you want, anything you want, what do you want? He's thinking, hmm, when I was younger, I was always considered ugly. And the girls never liked me. I want woman. I want no. I want with me. I want plenty woman. I want tall women. I want short women. I want big women. I want skinny women. I want women with big lips. I want women with no lips. I want women with big boobs. I want women with flat chests. I want women with big butt I want women with no butt
because the last one followed her left and it was not about it. He left her. The last one likes her, left her, she's crying her eyes out, she can't trust the man then no more, and then this one comes sliding up to her and says, like old son, I don't know, I love you, do you know what I mean? <laughs>
the chief. Why would her neighbour do that? That same neighbour, the cousin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's she's a goddess, so if I ask you, put a pot of soup and bring it home, and you bring it home. So okay. she asks the neighbour to bring a pot of soup, bring it home. Yes. And then what happens? She'll be bright. She's a goddess. So she'll be bright. She's bright.
Marion. Who's that? Marion. Oh, Marion. Come forward, Marion.
Where you come from, old woman? The old woman looks at him and says, Hunter, you now are at the edge of death. Hunter, you don't know where I come from, you don't know where I'm going, you don't know where I come from. Hunter, will you put your trust in me? And the hunter, he's there at death's door, he looks at the old woman, he asks himself, oh, old woman, where are you coming from? She says, hunter, it don't matter where I'm coming from, it don't matter where I'm going, it doesn't matter where, nothing. You're at death's door. Hunter, put your trust in me. If I ask you to do something, will you do it for me? Hunter is there thinking to himself, even if it's a dream, even if it's a mirage, I'm at the mouth of death. And he says to the old woman, okay, what do you have me do? She said, Hunter, take off all your clothes, take off your loin cloth, take off everything and stand there naked as the day that you're born. Hunter thinks to himself, old woman, what are you asking me? Stand and reveal yourself and be naked, Hunter. You don't know where I come, you don't know where I come from, you don't know where I'm going. This and it could be your beginning. Hunter thinks to himself, you know what? I will do what she asks. He strips himself naked and he stands there naked as the day that he's born. What will you have me do, old woman? Climb that man now twisted Baroka tree, hang your legs over the branch, and when I tell you, allow your legs to relax so that your head will plummet towards the ground and your head will smash. Old woman, he says, I'm hungry and I'm standing here naked with my manhood in front of me. Woman, what are you asking me to do? She says, you don't know who I am. You don't know where I come from. You don't know where I'm going. Your end could be your beginning and your beginning could be your end. Do you trust in me, old man? And the old man, the hunter, he thinks to himself, what have I got to lose? So he climbs up the gnarled tree. He puts his legs around the branch. His head is hanging towards the ground. She looks up at him and says, now let go. Hunter is tense. He don't know if he can do it, he's tense. He says, I can't do it. She says, Hunter, your end could be your beginning. Your beginning could be your end. Let go. Go. And as she says, let go, the hunter thinks to himself, death is at my door. He lets go, he releases, his legs flip over the branch of the tree, his head is plummeting towards the ground, his head smashes against the ground. Bang! And he wakes up. And when he wakes up, he's in a jungle. And someone shouts, we found him. He's here. We found him. And they come running. And he stays, and they pick him up on their shoulders, and they hoist him up, and they dance. He's alive, he's alive. We found him, we found him. And he asked them, I, I, I don't understand what's going on. And they say, oh, Hunter, you was in a battle, a fierce battle. We must clothe you, we must dress you. And they bring clothes for him and they wrap him around in clothes and they take him to his village. And when he enters his village, he can see a mass of people, they're all there. And they say, he's alive, he's alive, our chief is alive, he's alive. And they take him to his palace and they put him to sit and he sits down and they say, oh, you're alive. Well, how come you are alive? How come they left you to live? Yeah. It was because there was a war and at that war, the enemy said that I should remain alive. If I am alive, then we should not go back and make a war with them. That's why I'm alive. Oh, of course, they say, of course, that's why you're alive. Oh, we understand. Now you must sit, you must eat, and you must celebrate. Eat with us. And he sits and he eats and he thinks, is this all real? Is this real? And then he says to someone passing, um, maybe I'm shell-shocked, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm worn, war, torn. My mind isn't good anymore. Can you... Remind me of this place again so it becomes familiar. Yes, when one goes to war, 
blood and guts are disgusting, removes one's mind from all reality. Yes, we will remind you of this place. They take him into his village. He sees the homesteads all around. They take him into his palace. His palace is built up out from the ground and there are the struts sticking out. There are many floors. He goes down one hallway, down another hallway. He comes to a darkened hallway where there's a door with inscriptions on it. He puts his hand on the door and the person who's walking with him becomes stiff and says, well, you shouldn't open that door. And he says, why? And they say, well, you gave a decree that no one should open this door. For this is the door of overdoing. And he removes his hands. And he says, yes, I remember that decree. I gave it a long time ago. Should we go back and eat? And they go back and they eat and they feast and they eat and they feast and they eat and they feast and they eat and he's happy. And the day passes. Honor. Respect. Respect. Honor. And the day passes into another day, and it passes into a month, passes into a year, passes into three years, and one day someone comes to him and says, should you not take for yourself a wife? And he thinks to himself, I was so lost in whether this was real or not real, but it was and he says, yes, I will take for myself a wife. And before you know it, he goes to his village, he finds a wife, he marries her, he has children, and life for him is good. And his children, they grow up, they grow up big, they grow up bigger, they become men, they become women, and his life is blooming. His children have children, and he sees his grandchildren, and the grandchildren, they grow up, and they're running around, and they're all over the place. And one day someone says, should we not celebrate the day when we found you naked in the forest. And he says, yes, this is the anniversary. It's a long time past, but yes, we should celebrate. And so they lay out food. There's yams and there's, 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 there's food, as, as Sister Chi said. There's food, 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 food everywhere laid out. And he's eating and he's drinking and he's drinking and he's eating and he's eating and he's drinking. And he's drank too much. And he's ate too much. And he rises and he staggers as he rises. And he goes down his hallways. And he looks and he says to himself, all of this from nothing. I have a wife. I have children. I have grandchildren. All of this from nothing. And he staggers and he walks down one hallway. He looks into the room, one chamber. He says, this is the chamber where my children slept. And he walks down another chamber and he says, this is the chamber where my grandchildren come to stay when they stay over and play. And he walks down that darkened hall. And he comes to that door with inscriptions. And he puts his hand on that door handle. And he turns and he looks over his shoulder and he says, My wife is there. My children are playing there. My grandchildren, I hear them playing. Why should I give such a decree? If I am king and chief and a hunter, master hunter, I can break my own decree. I have my children there, I have my grandchildren there. This is my life. He turns the handle, he opens the door, he enters the room only to find himself standing there still naked with his manhood before him. The old woman, she stands next to him and she says, Hunter, the pot that boils over does not know it is dirty in itself. Hunter, dress yourself in your loincloth, pick up your bow and your arrow, and continue your journey of doubt. May none of you have doubt tonight at the energy that we have shared with you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the chief. This is the chief. This is the chief.
again for inviting us. And once again, without your presence, bums on seats, then you know we're just speaking to ourselves. So really, thank you very much for taking your time to come out and share with us.